Hi, I'm Andrew, the Young Adult and Media Librarian at North Brunswick Public Library. I'm going to show you a preview of a new book uh, that we have at the library, The Oracle Code by Marika Nekam and Manuel Pretano. Now, uh, Marika Nekamp is part of a trend of young adult novelists who are uh, trying their hands at writing graphic novels. And in this one, they take the character of Barbara Babs Gordon, uh, some, someone who might be known to you as Batgirl or Oracle, or maybe you've never heard of her at all. And th that's okay, because you absolutely have, there's absolutely no need for you to be familiar with this character before. And the illustrator, Manuel Pretano, uh, tell a story where you're definitely rewarded for paying very close attention to both the words and the pictures, uh, because there is a mystery to be solved here, or is there, and there is an opportunity to really get into uh, understanding the characters as well. I'm going to share, we share my screen now so I can show you the preview from the DC Comics website. I take the, as I said, just take a moment to look at this picture. Now, now you may not see that on this on your screen, but if you, you know, if you're looking at a very clear screen, then you might then you'll notice there are horizontal lines going across as though you actually are looking at a screen, even if you're reading a paper copy of the book. Um, also, if you look at the body language on the cover. You could see definitely if you look at the slump shoulder, if you look at the fist on top, uh, and if you look at the fact that this character in a wheelchair already, then we're getting, a, we, you can already get a sense of how much you can learn about the characters just from looking at the details. At the, now, Barbara Gordon, or Babs as she's known, is someone who loves mysteries. She loves solving puzzles. Uh, and her father is the chief uh, commissioner, the commissioner of police of Gotham City. So we, uh, she, when she, when she's, in, when she's looking at at a crime that's going on, she gets shot, and as a result, she is bound to a wheelchair. Uh, so she goes to a state-of-the-art facility. Um, where she really struggles. Um, she's not used to having this new uh, change in her life. And I, yeah, I love the detail of having just this one little bo bottom right panel askew, right? Even the, the shape of it is off to tell you something's wrong here. As, as she spends time, she spends time with some of the other residents, uh, including a couple who uh, reach out to her. But she has slow going in terms of being able to let other people in because of what's going on with her. And if you look at look at the detail of the hair, I love how much detail there is that uh, that Manuel Pretano put into this. Another character that she meets, another resident, is Jenna, and Jenna is clearly acting like someone who's been traumatized, um, including by by a fire that it ki that uh, killed her parents, but. Maybe something else is traumatizing her. This is where part of the mystery comes in. And to help Babs sleep, Jenna tells Babs these uh, creepy little stories that are drawn in a different style than the rest of the book. Now, these stories may have some clues to whatever to what mystery there is for whatever strange happenings are going on. To make things even more mysterious, Jenna insists that her brother is here at the facility, but yet no one can find him. So of course, Babs and her friends have to investigate, right? And in some ways, this mystery, whether there really is a mystery or not, or it's all in her head, may be the best thing for Babs because she becomes alive again when she has, when she has a puzzle to solve. Well, at least it becomes good for her unless there's actually some kind of dangers involved, which if there really is a mystery, there almost certainly is going to be danger involved. So the puzzle, the jigsaw here is an important motif in the book. 
right? Even the uh, even the swimming pool over here, you can see there is part of a part of a greater mystery. So it's fun to uh, sort of go along with her and see: is there really a mystery? Is there something strange going on at this seemingly innocent facility? Uh, that's what, of course, we have to we have to solve that, as well as sort of the internal mystery of who Babs is now that she that uh, that now that she's in a wheelchair, or is she the same person she's always been? Well, that's where I, and can she let people in now? This, these are all things that she has to solve for herself. Uh, so anyhow, as I mentioned, Barbara, Go and again. I have to stress that you absolutely do not have to have, be at all familiar with any of these characters to enjoy the book. In fact, you know, they, the creators really don't put in a whole bunch of the Batman myths in here, though it's not like it's not like that's part of the sub mystery you have to solve. Um, but it, but uh, but if you know her, she, you know that she was an important character not only in the Batman titles and in her own title, but in the pages of Suicide Squad. And in uh, and of course, Birds of Prey. Now there was a uh, there was an infamous, though a controversial, group, but a uh, graphic novel called uh, the Batman: The Killing Joke, in which Barbara Gordon, who had been Batgirl, is shot by the Joker, and you know, as a result, she can't run around anymore. But if you if you follow the character at all, you know that that's not the end of her heroic career. She's still very much able to use her crime fighting skills um, really as a librarian um, to, to, uh, to help fight crime. Uh, so I think that uh, this is book is sort of too similar to the spirit of that. So if you're interested in uh, reading this book, uh, if it sounds like something you'd like, you can put a hold on it from our website, northbrunswicklibrary.org or through calling us. I'm curious to hear your opinions about it, or if there are any other books that you'd like us to look at, either uh, either for me to talk about in this or for us maybe to uh, purchase for the library. Happy reading.